Hello and welcome to uh, the Movie Society podcast. I'm Molly and I'm joined by James. Hello. Rohan. Hello. And Giles. Hello. Yeah. Giles is a very special guest. He, uh, as, 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 a, as a, you know, as for arguably, you know, a kind of a primordial anticipator of this entire programme, playing, setting the, you know, the, the, the raw kind of like emergent, sudden kind of like, very kind of like, you know, uh, you know, uh, free freewheeling aspects of, of the film society. Basically, this so, is all my fault. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Well, you know, we've, we've, uh, there's there's a lot there's a, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of you know territory here and and old and old wounds and old, and, and, and and old and old scars. But in many, but in many ways, um, in a good way. Yeah, in a, in a good way. But anyway, so yeah. um, and having set Giles up like that, um, <laughs> no pressure. Um, yeah. So this week. Um, uh, movie Society, we watched Robert Altman's 1970 uh, black comedy classic, MASH. Um, and MASH follows a group of um, staff from a frontline medic- uh, from a frontline hospital in the Korean War and the antics they get up to um, in and out of the surgery room. So, um, yeah, firstly, what did people make of it? I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was quite funny. Um, I, I I did have um, uh, expectations that it would be similar to, as you're saying, Catch Twenty Two, a lot of slapstick elements. Obviously, there were some moments I felt dated, especially in this like kind of sexist pr- problems of sexism in terms mm. of its mm. <clears throat> with hot lips in the shower. And yeah, some of the we'll, scene. We'll, yeah, But I did think I did think it was it it was funny and it was kind of an interesting take on, <laughs> I guess. On, on on what it's like to be at war and this kind of like absurd state of mind mm-hmm. and the effect it can have on people. You know, yeah. So what did what did everyone else think? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I didn't have a I question. Mean, so. I haven't watched it for quite a, f- a few years, and definitely coming back. And it's, it's one of like the films like my sort of my dad kind of like likes, and you know, his, and his you know my granddad who was kind of you know did his national service in the sixties in America and was kind of you know a young guy at the time, so. It was in that kind of like it, I can definitely see that kind of vein running through it. It reminds me of like the, you know the kind of jokes he might the, his like army stories in some of the ways. Well, you know, you know, but they but they but they not on the quite on the same level, but the kind of you know the, the anecdotes mm. and the um, the camaraderie, which is. Um, but on a general level, I do kind of like sort of war comedies and black and dark comedy mm. in general, especially. And there are aspects of the I really like the style, the Altman's kind of like you know style of kind of um, involving all these like interspersing kind of conversations and and the um, the kind of um, farcical comedy is great and the the way it catches the way it doesn't it doesn't sideline the kind of the darker side of stuff but it hints at it in this kind of like strange and in, in the it through its surre- surreality like you can you know the bit where they is it the bit where they go and like they've got like their um the kind of the boy who works in the mess hall and they and they and, they, and, they, and he and he they, they they're trying to get him around the assessment to take him in, the the army assessment by giving him like amphetamines but mm. he doesn't make it through and there's a sort of moment you know like hawkeye's just like you know he's got he's got a kind of a not uh, a, a sort of his, his characteristically kind of so, sort of like jovial response but you can sell as a kind of you know there's a definite yeah there's a, there's a definite there's a kind of sadness or a kind of darkness about about the implication about of you know what, what what's going to happen to their you know a, a new member of their sort of clan mm. um <laughs> I, 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 I i do get yeah, what you mean because yeah. like, i expect w- w- with watching films like this with like i guess like outdated portrayals it's actually interesting as well um because disney um Recently, on their new streaming service, like all the like old films, like so I can't, uh, they put like a warning, like uh, the out, outdated cultural oh, really? representations. Yeah. Really? <laughs> um, funny. So I guess it's kind mm. of like applicable to this as well. Yeah. I mean, should we? I mean, should we? When watching films like this with like sexist, racist, whatever portrayals, mm. even though this is a comedy, should we dissect that and say that there's not value in that? Or I'm not. Yeah, no. I'm not sure how to treat it because it's clear that. It's a completely different time now, yeah. and which is like clear to everyone who watches it. So, I mean, you say that there's a lot of films that were made True. around that era and like exactly. Before, even I mean, it was 1970, so it was a different time. But I think even for its time, it was quite um, 
laddish yeah. in its kind of mm. portrayal of I feel like women. To disregard certain parts yeah. of a film, or like any work of art, really, it's um. I mean, you're. It means you're. You're getting. You're giving yourself like a limited understanding of mm. it. You can't mm. back read current ideas mm. onto everything that's been done ever. Like historicizing. Yeah. I mean, like if you want to be able to like talk about the film properly and like its theme, you kind of have to do like warts and all, mm. even if like for yeah nasty bits and, <laughs> and you can still enjoy it like on the like, like I mean I, don't mm. know, I mean I think maybe it's a credit to kind of the the way it's the, the narrative and the way it's kind of moved in the, its technical aspects which make it mm. still stand up mm. Mm. and it means the kind of more because it was a success very successful um uh kind of like sitcom mm. and it does probably yeah, smell massive. the end. yeah I think like the finale was like the most rated yeah. show in America, for Eric, it's something like 30 million viewers. Wow. Which is like half the population of Great Britain. <laughs> and that's yeah. the thing, like, I can yeah. imagine, like, yeah, and that's quite an interesting fact because I think you definitely you can smell that kind of like TV, kind of like more like TV comedy parts in there. Maybe that's probably why it's, there are films which are more pro- from the ESA movement which are a bit, have a bit more, slightly more progressive um, mm. representations of, you know, kind of like men and women. Um, because. Yeah. Because it's still rooted in a kind of slapstick gag, a kind of like uh, sitcom mm. kind of humour, which might mean you know, TV kind of was. Um, I don't say it's sort of like TV. TV's kind of caught, kind of caught, sort of caught up in the a, a little bit later. You know, there was you know when it comes to shows like that, t- TV shows are generally a bit more kind of like sexist in the seventies, you know, and you know weren't they and. No, in that respect, like there was a, a big turning point in pop culture, and by that I mean like look at disregarding film because films are probably a bit more longer established as an art form. Um, I think I think I think um, there was by um, I don't know by, by a bit later you could sort of expect you could expect to see attitudes in television representations evolve a bit. So maybe that I know that doesn't, doesn't like let it off completely. I, I mean, to be honest, as is it's representing like an institution of of the army. Yeah, which is, in itself is quite a macho, yeah, exactly. kind of like, mm. kind of yeah, pigeonholed state of like, yeah, masculine en- energy. So you could say, it's kind of like, obviously there's like issues with it, but that is kind of the world it's in, and that still is like a problem in the army still, or kind of these like, yeah, macho institutions. Yeah, I mean, um, and they do parody the masculinist. There is a pa- there is a, also a good, a good. I like to think the sap, but although like they resort to these dated stereotypes, they. I suppose oh, yeah, maybe this is a redundant. This could be redundant. Like, they do, they do like a lot of the big for the film is is just sort of like parodying army bureaucracy and kind mm. of like and and army structures. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no, it's um, yeah, no, I think it it's it a, does hold up, especially as a comedy. Mm. Like, it is very funny, but I would say uh, it still doesn't change the fact that it, it's a shame. It is quite. I think its portrayal of women is quite limiting and I completely see what you mean about it it, it wouldn't make sense for all the characters to be, you know, progressive feminist men mm. who treat yeah. women brilliantly. I don't think that's the point. Um, so I don't think it's it's endorsing the way that the men treat the women. But at the same time, it is a bit limiting that it feels like you never get the point of view of the women. Like They are no, it's true. presented. So with Hawkeye and a few of the other male characters, you do get to see, I think, a more rounded sort of emotional palette from them mm. than, 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 than you ever do from Hot Lips because with Hot Lips a female um, character the head nurse is just repeatedly humiliated by all the men you, you only ever see her as In, like a, a kind of annoying a and subject yeah. who's yeah. who's kind of yeah. he... subjected to all this stuff but she kind of deserves it because she's a bit annoying and she's a woman so you yeah I don't think you get fully rounded yeah I think that's probably characters big, that's his biggest it, problem I think which does weaken the film a bit I think yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say like I wouldn't describe the characters as rounded. I mean, they're all kind of no, like they're... huge blowups of like. They're not realistic in any sense. And but... and then that's probably like the same with Hot Lips. Like she she's beaten, for, she once believed in a bureaucracy, and then she's beaten by it, mm. and becomes this kind of this part of part of the the circus of it all. In the end, I think that's what he was trying to. But she's kind of turned. To the, she is this sort of like it, I think in a sense. She's just like a naggy woman. But basically. she's kind of like be she sort of like in sort of beats into this kind of comical submission by the end and during the game and she's sort of like a, a kind of an irritating cheerleader who just sort yeah. of like just looks a bit which, silly. Which she which she generally looks very silly and like and although it is kind of I do kind of 
I do like the in an objective sense the joke not on her but the joke of her just sort of like repeating this same like just just sit being kind of annoying and, and repeating the same thing over and over again is is kind of funny but like it's just like the fact that it, the, the, the fact that it happens to be her and then they kind of like they kind of bash at her. I don't think it happens to be her. It's definitely her because she's a woman. No, 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 no. I meant, I meant like the fact that it is her. The, oh, that, right, that's yeah. I mean. The fact yeah. that it's it is uh, it's, it's that it's like I mean, what I'm trying I'm trying like what I'm trying to do is like isolate <laughs> isolate the, the joke in itself mm. in abstract terms. I mean, I than, like the, yeah. I mean, yeah. The, if the yeah. fact, yeah. Yeah, like I was laughing throughout. It's a very entertaining film, but mm. um, yeah. yeah, it's just. Yeah. A way that it hasn't necessarily aged well. Um, yeah, uh, um, I mean, I mean, for that fact, I think it's, I think, I think it's, I mean, I mean, I mean, I think it's a deep and or a, a not a bad thing we show these sort of films in society because mm -hmm. it means that you know, not like ignore. I mean, arguably, local. Well, actually, to be honest, we, we show these sort of films all the time in the society. Like, yeah. Uh, but but um, yeah. I mean, did you have anything more to add about the kind of uh, uh, channels? I feel like there's um, just because like a film has like some serious like problems with it, doesn't mean it's not worth remembering oh, and yeah. talking about, mm -hmm. and that doesn't excuse those bad things. But you just but, yeah, and yeah. I think it's I think it's still good to like yeah view these sorts of films. I mean, how, still worth watching. How did it size up compared to and the other? also just like understanding attitudes back then? Yeah. Yes. Well. Yeah, and I understand. I think it is important for that. I mean, in the how do you compare it to like Allman's other films? I've not seen. Um, I've seen mm. the player, which I think I think I'd probably prefer the player. Mm. Um, I mean, I mean Spirit. that's more of like a like. Have you seen the player, Giles? Um, I haven't seen the whole thing. I mean, it's like it's very meta. Yeah, it's like, like the famous like the iconic op Sorry, it's like the iconic like opening sequence, um, where because it's all about um the film industry. Yeah, let's go. It follows tracking shot of loads of um screenwriters. Actually, Hotstein like talking about famous opening s shots in films, but oh, all yes. like tracking shots, mm. like in Touch of Evil, and so yeah. it's all very much like it's just a bit of like a send up of like the film industry itself. Mm. Mm. I think yeah. I, I think I probably feel like I feel like I did prefer that, uh, but I think a film I, that did remind me of I've seen Nashville as well. I mean, that's the only other Altman I've seen, and I did that did remind me of it's like a remind me of a, a mash as well, kind of mm. like. Circus, isn't it? Set in a, yeah, the music of like just world of country music. Characters, a lot going on. Yeah, like um, I mean, if you watch a trailer of Nashville as well, it's kind of kind of meta, and it's like, yeah. this is playing. Boom, and yeah, I've seen it. it um, yeah. I mean, here's an interesting filmmaker. And it's a mm. kind of because he seems to take like take on a world and kind of like twist it on his head, like say it might like the mm, this, the army. The kind of country music, um, country music and politics all wrapped into one, and the Hollywood. I'm trying to think what else he's done. Um, he's done McCabe and Mrs. Western. Miller. Yeah. Because that says like the end mm. of the West. It's very um, like like this kind of just about like the actual Western thing itself. Mm. Mm. So it so seems to take on like these very recognizable, uh, uh, recognizable worlds. Mm. Mm. And we're moving on to our next section of the podcast, and this week we went to. Uh, the Aesthetic of Film Festival. Hello, I'm Molly and I'm joined by James. Hello. And for this week's feature, we're at the York Aesthetica Short Film Festival, where we'll be reviewing some films, hopefully interviewing some people, and generally getting a feel of what it's like at a film festival. We're currently outside the Yorkshire Museum waiting to go and see, see our first set of comedy shorts, and we'll report back in with you after the screening. Thanks. Uh, right, so we've just seen the um, a series of comedy shorts, and I'm talking now with Tom Bailey. Bailey who, Tom Bailey. Bailey Tom Bailey, sorry, okay. who uh, directed one of the shorts called The History of Nipples. So, um, yeah, was that one of your first films? Have you directed before? Yeah, um, I've probably made about six short films that have gone to festivals, so it's, uh, it's, I'm a bit of a veteran. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so basically what made you want to do A History of Nipples? Uh, I, I saw something in uh, the, I think it's the National History Museum of Dublin where they talk about this Celtic fertility ritual wherein uh, people would come, they would kneel on one knee and they would suck upon the king's nipple to bring forth fertility to the land. Mm. But if it failed, they would uh, cut off his nipples and, and kill him. 
and I thought this was a, uh, an, a kind of amazing, absurd idea. And I thought about a modern man hearing about this, and that's sort of where the the idea came from. And it was a long gestating thing because I thought it was too silly. And uh, yeah, but it's 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 good. It's going well. Yeah. How, how are you finding the festival so far? Yeah, it's good. Um, I came last year uh, as well, so aesthetic is a great one for meeting people. It's good hubs. Um, it's good networking and uh, and great selection of shorts. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking to us and hope the rest of your festival is great. All right, thanks. We've just come out of the comedy screening. As you've heard, we uh, spoke to the, one of the directors, which was very interesting. Um, now, I just wanted to ask you, Molly, what did you make of that? Then? I thought that was really good. Um, I was, yeah, it was very funny, uh, quite a few of them. There were, so there were six shorts, and what I found interesting was that probably five of them, uh, there was a kind of absurd body horror aspect to them, which, which I enjoyed. Yeah. My my favorite was the uh, what was it chicken flick was was, was literally just uh, um chickens doing absurd things like shopping in supermarkets and uh, farming, humans. farming humans for eggs which was very funny. Yes. Um and it, yeah, it was interesting to see how there was a focus on the, the an absurd body aspect especially you, what did you make of the asparagus tips? Yeah, asparagus tips I uh, was really funny. I think probably the 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 ones with the biggest horror slant were asparagus tips and history of nipples and i think it was interesting that so we talked to bailey tom bailey uh director of history of nipples and he was saying how uh his his film screened at fright fest and won best terror at the oaxaca film festival so you know there is definitely a bit of a uh yeah comedy horror theme going on here but yeah they were very yeah. funny so we've seen some uh, off air screening so uh, we'll report back in later Hello, we've just been joined by Rohan. Hello, we're going to go and see some, about to go and see some documentaries. We're starting at City Screen. There's an exciting range from um, um, you know, stuff on the, on the from, from spanning from across the globe, and we'll we'll catch we'll, we'll catch up a bit later. Um, so we've just come out the uh, documentary screening, and we're joined by an audience member. What's your name? Uh, my name is Joe. Uh, what did you make of the films? They're all right. I, uh, they, 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 visually, they were interesting at points, um, but I, I think overall somewhat o underwhelming uh, at points. It feels like they, um, a lot of them, would have these kind of the the. I can't remember the name of it now. Right. Uh, what, what's oh. the name? So the ones we saw: Borderlands, Histories of Wolves, yes. You Are Venice, and Blood Bikers. Borderlands, I think, was the one that I was probably the most disappointed with because it, it, it was it was quite short and 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 its premise sort of relied on on this poem that I thought was interesting but I didn't necessarily see how it correlated to the imagery that it was surrounded by I guess what well, do you make a view of Venice that was arguably the one I was most interested yeah. by um, yeah I, I like that one the most the, uh, the sim simulate simulacra and simulation came up with postmodernism came it was, all, it, was all, it was all it was all it was all eclipsing everywhere I, I, I feel that was the most kind of like striking one I mean what did you think I mean the way it used um, like a lot of YouTube footage you, footage that they didn't necessarily film themselves I think was interesting in kind of creating that idea of Venice as something that is uh is is something that you make it or that is is kind of simulatory in a way yeah so just to um, expand on that so borderlands which joe just discussed was um is described as a visual poem so it was a poem with sort of um visuals of the norwegian and russian border towns and you are venice was a um essay film uh, composed of youtube footage um exploring venice and its tourism and climate change using yeah, yeah. I, I also wanted to ask about uh, i guess short form documentary because i I guess it's kind of difficult to go into depth in a topic if you've only got a limited yeah. time. So I just wanted, what do you think about that? I think, because you see a few different approaches, because probably the most traditional one was Blood Bikers, where it felt very much like, we're going to showcase, you know, these group of people that you probably haven't heard of before. And, you know, we're going to have interview them and see what happened, you know, to see what they have to say about this topic. And, you know, it's, it's interesting in the sense that you know, oh, I haven't heard of these people before, but in actual, I guess, craft itself, it didn't seem too exciting and and it, it had a purpose. Yeah, it, it had a, it had a purpose definitely. I think, I but, think that but, was kind of what it was for, really. But think, but, it, yeah. but it wasn't. I don't think it was a particularly exciting filmmaking, but I think it was. It, it, it kind of used to sort of 
you know, Lochian principles of social documentation. I want to go back to that sort of thing, you know, re, you know, like, I think it was about like conveying s simple humanity, and, 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 or, or you know, through some testimonies in a very fairly conventional way. It felt to me almost like a charity advert, like an advert for so, or, or to well, promote these volunteers and, and encourage people to join, which is quite a noble cause I for I agree. Blood Wait, Bloodrunners, but it didn't make it a great film, in my opinion. I liked hearing about them, uh, but like you know, you know, it, it, it was it made, it made me think about the, the you know the voluntary organisations which prop up the ailing healthcare system in the country, and that's important. Uh, uh, and, and I think for that, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah I, I think for that, it was, a, it was, it was, it was nice. You know, and, and but yeah, for me, like you, Venice, um, definitely, I think had more of a kind of like again, not the, it was more of an original point to make. And there was some, I like the way it kind of slightly more, I think more subtly weaved in the issues that Borderlands was going, was going, was going, was was going for, but leaving it more understated and leaving it more to people to kind of like to 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 work out it was and and so and it, the range of top things it, it kind of alluded the range of subjects it alluded to were i don't know yeah uh, were, uh, generally yeah it was a bit more stimulating in that respect but overall you know i i, I um i think i think it's been a a, a nice little session uh, yeah thank you for joining us joe and we'll uh, let you know where we're going next so we've just been to the drama um, shorts, the sections entitled Encounters. There's a series of various, I suppose, kind of intriguing um, little kind of like stories and, and often based around these kind of chance interactions. What did you, you, you think, Molly? I thought it was all right. Um, there was a French one called um, Find Harbour for a Day, which was quite interesting about a sort of French school trip and a uh, school teacher accidentally ends up um, smuggling a... a it's not entirely clear. Possibly a refugee or yeah. a, a child yeah. on the run, and I thought that that was that was interesting. That was probably my favourite of the six. Um, yeah, I found that one was uh, had a quite a good pace to it. It was it, it, it felt quite it was it had a it was tense and um, enjoyable. I think the first one was very good, very kind of like. I liked its minimal effect. It was very good at making just kind of distilling discomfort in a certain in, a, in, a, in that sort of situation because mm -hmm. it was literally just and the amount of information which was released to sort of strip back. I mean, did you have any comments, James? Um, well, I only saw half of the first one, but I did notice that a lot of the uh, the scores, the music, and them was quite similar. Uh, yeah. There wasn't one that really stood out in terms of. Uh, I mean, that was probably my biggest problem with them. Not. The, the, some of them were okay, but um, the lust I found to be... Yeah, yeah it's a bit... It was quite funny, um, but I don't think it was intending to be funny, but... Yeah, I felt like it just didn't have as much kind of... It didn't quite have as much kind of mileage. Um, to be fair, I did enjoy the historical one. I like, I, I enjoyed them. Um, was it... Quiver... I can't pronounce it. Quiver Bay. How, how do you pronounce the... Kiviv? Kiviv, yeah. That, I thought that was quite nice. I mean, I liked... Then again, my it might just become a sentimental old fool. <laughs> it was, you know, it was just it was short. It wasn't. It was a. It was well thought, put together. I thought that one stood out nicely. I think they they were um, no, they were all interesting enough. But I did think, yeah, a big problem. Like James was just saying, how the music was very the same. Thematically, a lot of them were very similar. And I suppose they were tied together. I think it's probably just a quirk of the program that they deliberately put together, lumped together dramas that are considered similar. But I think it made for a bit of a funny viewing. Experience. Experience because a few of them, like the one about the mm. French school trip and the historically set one, did yeah. stand out. But the, it did feel a bit homogenous, which I think was just an issue with how they chose to screen them. Yeah, because um, well, as, as I've emphasised before, they usually there's a series of um, for each uh, kind of genre or um, they're, they're in, they're each kind of genre kind of like sit street screening. Um, they're often bound by a particular theme, um, so the one we've just gone into was entitled Encounters so I suppose they focus on these kind of <clears throat> these these, these, sort of, these interactions with people but um, I can imagine given the short form nature that they would often run the risk of this of, of, that, of that sort of issue yeah. I think um, I think we're going to try and talk to some people after the screening so yeah so we'll, we'll, we'll see what other audience people. members thought of it 
What did you think of the film? Uh, I thought that was an absolute excellent block. Absolutely every single one was stunning. Really well performed and shot and written and some great stories as well. Did you have a favourite? Uh, I, actually, I could not pick a favourite out of that lot, no. Definitely not. Um, they were all... I equally as brilliant in, in all the different sections, all the different stories that they were telling, you can't really compare them. What have you thought of the festival so far? I'm not sure how, how, how many days have you been here? What have you seen that's been good? Been here three days um, and I thought it's absolutely brilliant. There's so much on um, and I haven't been disappointed to, in anything I've been to see. Um, uh, yeah, and the, the, there's a huge range of things going on from all the great movies to like some of the immersive stuff, the VR stuff that I've been uh, been to, and the network events have been brilliant as well. Been met loads of people, really well organised. What, what's your name, by the way? Jacob. Jacob. All right. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Cheers. Yeah, so um, what did you make of the screening then? I thought they were quite interesting, a bit bland, but I've enjoyed comedy most so far. It's a good laugh. But yeah, yeah. Do, do you guys have any thoughts? What did you think? Yeah, similar. It was a bit bland, a bit slow, those ones, personally. I don't know. So did you have a favourite? Did any of you have a favourite? I like the last one. It was quite poignant. Did you have a, did you have a favourite? I think the second last one. I forgot it was, though. Okay. <laughs> no, no problem. Least favourite? Yeah, least favourite. Um, probably, oh, no. The first one was just nothing happened. So, are you are you guys? Uh, what 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 brings you to the festival then? Uh, we're actually from London on a school trip here. Oh, so. Okay. Okay. so, is this your first like film festival? We, last year we came. We came as well last year, but this is our second time coming. But okay. We, we don't regularly go. I wouldn't say. So. Okay. Are you film students or are you just on a school trip? Anyone. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Right, anyway, thank you for talking yeah. to us. All right. Cheers. Hello, so we've just come out of the uh, experimental um, screening at the Frygate Theatre. Um, yeah, what did people think of it? Um, so yeah, I, I've, um, I think I really enjoyed the, the couple we got to see. Um, the, um, the, fir the first one we saw, which was entitled um, Spiral Garage. Um, and which was screened, uh, the second last screening. Yeah, yeah, the second to last screening. Uh, um, <clears throat> it, it describes itself as a, vis a visit to a hypercritical world where people continue to continue, continue insult each other. A poisonous atmosphere which leads to a, a, a spiral of violence. A downward journey to finding peace. Um, and then obviously my expectations were, weren't necessarily... were changed quite a bit because I wasn't expecting the le I wasn't anticipating the level of abstraction it was on but it was in many places it was very it was incredibly intriguing very, and it was very interesting very quite funny at points um, quite telling I think I think it's the kind of thing you just have to, you have to let go and kind of see what you want to see in it I think yeah. it really kind of reminded me of the YouTube trending page this kind of like a disassociation of what they were saying to it it was definitely using sort of meme kind of culture like, and, and uh, yeah like apparatus almost have you seen any um, well, adult swim shorts it really reminded me of those like, yeah, um, surreal. Yeah, yeah, kind of like the, the the animation style. It was really reminiscent of, of some adult swim shorts I was seeing. That sort of deliberately clunky CGI look. It yeah, was uh, kind of quite empty, hypnotic. The empty, depersonalized um, kind of like space, but with all these kind of like garbled, abstract ex these, with these garbled abstractions, which kind of overlay, which would overlay this these. You know, kind of slightly absurd monologues given by the two characters. Um, you know, I, I really enjoyed it. And, and the last one, I have. I got yeah, a, I play a Polish, um, a Polish short. Yeah. And um, what was it? It describes itself as a man consumed by the guilt of not having dared to defend his mother as a small child, uh, plays the role of the murderer and forces his ten-year-old self to face up to his underlying trauma. Thoughts? I actually didn't really get it for, for, at first before I read this again. And I, was, I, I thought I knew it was about like empathy and about like viewing things in different angles. I, I wasn't quite aware of the actual story in the sense of what, what, what was I, I knew I understood kind of thematically what it was looking at and um, the whole thing with like with with with, with, with um, Pepsi and Coke yeah. I mean, I mean yeah. what could be said about that well I mean that's what, what I thought like because I didn't really get it initially I thought this was it was just going to end in it is a Pepsi advert and that was like the kind of absurd horrible comedy of it yeah. then it kind of it, it was about like kind of coming to them with trauma yeah. I mean I did it was interesting but I did not find it as interesting as a Spiral Garage no yeah I think uh, yeah the standout for me and seemingly for uh, quite a few people was Spiral Garage so um, yeah so that was experimental we're going to go and interview some other audience members and see what they thought yeah 
Um, what did you make of the um, the films? Any in particular or all of them? Uh, well, did you have a favourite? Uh, the Steam one. The Steam one? Yeah. Which uh, is why probably, probably an unpopular pick. Um, I don't know what the proper was it like Angie's or something was the name of it? I assume that's a foreign word for Steam. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, um, I, I kept being surprised by hidden cuts all the way through it. Um, these really long shots where the, the elevation of the camera would change, which would be the initial clue, and then I was just trying to spot, right, where's the next one going to be? And then there were all these weird um, uh, uh, temporal distortions, not temporal, spatial, where the camera would seem like it had led through one way and then end up at the other end of the building, and that would trip me out. Um, so that was my favourite, but then, I mean, the other, <laughs> the final two were, were... Yeah, what did you make of Spiral Garage? Um, at first, I didn't know what to make of it, like, um, was it just a meta-commentary? Was it deliberately bad? Was it undeliberately bad? But, um, yeah, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd have to watch it again to really kind of get what the point was. But maybe the point was to not have a point and to show the, the vanity of this whole endeavour. Um, I'm not I too think, sure. I, think that's, I definitely think that's the way. I found it quite funny. It just, it just reminds me of everyone, I, of a lot of conversations I have, but kind of stripped back to their essentials with people. So, yeah. so much of it felt like it was taking my own character and throwing it back yeah. at me to show me how... I, I, I don't want to use a, a, a word that isn't suitable for work. Um, but yeah, just show me how kind of um, stupid a lot of the things I spend my own time doing, you know, the, the kind of discussions you have with people about stuff. Uh, about m memification, I guess. Yes, the memification of life. Um, and then, no, the final one as well. Um, that, was, that was really good. Um, I, I, I don't want to say much about it because, you know, it's kind of a, a watch it and experience it, but... That that killed me at a few points. I was I was quite quite impressed. Um, um, well, thank you for what's your name by the way, Jordan. Thank you. All right, Jordan. Thank you for talking to us. Thank you. Hello. Uh, so we're here talking to um, Ian Nesbitt, who is a filmmaker who's had um, a film at the, playing at the documentary festival. So, um, Ian, could you just say what was your film? Yeah. So the film's called Acts of Quiet Resistance. Um, it's a black and white feature documentary. Um, about a man who lives and travels in a horse-drawn wagon. Um, and it's kind of a, a year spent on and off with him. Um, it's a very slow, black and white piece. Um, is, this a, is it your first film or how many films have you made? Like, What's your, your story as a filmmaker, I guess? Um, so it's my third feature. Um, I probably, someone asked me yesterday, I think I've probably made about 40 films. Okay. Um, but um, I'm an artist and filmmaker, so some of those are commissions based, uh, and some are. So I, I use a, that that um, process to support f films like this. That can, can some of your work be found online, or where can people find it? Yeah, I've got a Vimeo channel, Ian Nesbit, um, and um, a website which is actually currently in the process of uh, of moving hosts so it's not actually up at the moment but outsidefilm.org.uk as well how are you finding the festival um do you enjoy festivals uh yeah do yeah yeah um sometimes some have different focuses um this one is sort of less hands-on <laughs> you know that there's there's yeah. sort of not really kind of q and a's or, or okay. this, the, with, with the filmmakers that kind of thing really um i quite like that um, but yeah, this it just has a different focus. It's a short film festival, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for talking to us. And yeah. Hello, uh, I am here with James today on Sunday for our second day of the Aesthetica Film Festival, and we've just seen the feature-length documentary El Cuarto Reino, um, a documentary by Adán Aliaga um, sorry about that, a Spanish documentary maker and it's about um, a redemption centre on the outskirts of New York where illegal undocumented migrants and various down and out people um, live together um, so yeah, what did, you, what did you make of the film James? Um, yeah, I uh, really enjoyed the film Initially, I wasn't too sure because I thought, is this just another poverty porn piece, That's like what you see on the BBC? But I think it was quite a nuance and like a human portrayal. It wasn't just, oh, that's sad. Look at that. That, that's, that's, that man's sad. He's homeless. Um, 
what yeah what did you make of it yeah i i completely agree i mean i think at first i was thinking it's another uh sad man film um where we're just meant to sort of pity him relentlessly but no i thought it was it was moving but it was what i thought was the strength of that it was just following these human stories and it gave the people in it like a proper dignified um portrayal so it was you know about their relationships and and their kind of yeah their hopes and their, their them as people rather than just sort of um yeah like it, it yeah it's all beyond their their situation I think um, I did quite like it because I did like how it was all enclosed to the space with which they lived because uh, it was in New York but you wouldn't have been able to tell it was in New York other than that it was just them surrounded by rubbish and tr trying to build their lives again I guess and I I also quite liked it did show that like the eccentricities of like because there was one um, individual in it who was like kind of um, g getting into conspiracy theories and yeah. sort of like Aliens. aliens and so it was kind of this like st strange kind of plastic world where people were questioning uh, uh, me metaphysics and like aliens which was I, I, I thought was quite interesting mm, it was it was um yeah i struggled to place it because it's by a spanish filmmaker and this um this uh, redemption center was uh, run by a spanish woman and um you know, a, a lot of the people in it were Hispanic, so I had no idea. I thought it could have been anywhere from the borderlands with Mexico to, yeah, pretty much anywhere. So it did feel kind of like this strange, like, otherworldly space that they sort of built for themselves. Um, no, I thought it was a really good film. Excellent yeah. It would have been quite good to talk to the filmmaker himself because I was quite curious to, like, how he actually mm. found this place, how long he was there for and what actually happened to the people in it but yeah. it's a shame but yeah yeah and of course i suppose another big difference about uh this film is of course it's it's a feature feature length one uh, so everything else we've seen has been short so it, it has been quite nice i've been enjoying all the shorts but it was nice to kind of settle down with a film and let it unfurl for its full length i thought it worked very well and every single week. So last yes. week or, or episode, whenever it was, I set Molly and James Barney Platts Mills' Private Road from 1971. It's a kind of like a, a funny kind of like British, unusual British indie flick from the early 70s about a kind of a, a, kind of a young writer um, played by um, a, a, a young Bruce Robinson uh, kind of trying to sort of straddle this bohemian lifestyle with, um, with, um, with um, a kind of a relationship to a sort of a, a more sort of, a sort of middle class like girl. Um, so, what did you guys think? So, I have to say, I didn't take to it. I can imagine you'd probably say that mm. because it's been because uh, I haven't seen it for quite a few years. I got oh, it's a stony stare. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, I, 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 you're going to round on me. <laughs> oh. I feel Melvin embodying me. No, uh, no I, I didn't. I didn't really get it either. But I mean. It, it felt like it was like it never really took off. Mm. I mean, there was some, there was no kind of d dramatic element, and maybe that was the point. And maybe it's just the fact that it when did it come out again? Sorry, seventy one. But it, the it was. It, I think there was definitely they had they were kind of using experimenting with like improvisation a lot of the mm. time, and they were kind of, that was probably the reason why it does the same thing. So it has. I found it had this like this sort of like some of a sort of documentary charm to it in the beginning I mean it kind of felt all mock you or you know like the way the way it's more on a formal level um, I mean it's been a long time since I've watched it but mm. I thought it that I kind of like the I don't know offbeat tone um, especially considering you don't really see this in British social realist film so or just well it's not really social it's sort of it's not, I wouldn't call it social realism but you, you don't really I don't really I hadn't seen this from the what I associate with kind of small British cinema of the time period um I mean, that's that's what I found unusual about it, as a, as as a, as where you know, especially when it came out. What do you know? What the reception of it w w was when it came out? Not really. I would have thought it's quite. I don't even. I I I haven't. I haven't. I haven't looked for quite a while. Mm. I mean. Um. I mean. Sorry. I mean. I I I've stopped you guys in your in your, no, in your pages. Um, I think. Yeah. I'd just say. I don't know. It just felt oddly lifeless and. I don't know. I mean, 
what I, I, I did find it what I did find most interesting about it was how it, it's kind of like a you know um, proto with Nell and I like mm. a lot of the yeah, same that's what I found, you see you see the, the patterns but I feel like that doesn't do it any favours because then you're just comparing it to with Nell and no. I, which it's obviously you know not well mm. I don't um, think it's really like with Nell in that respect no not in tone yeah. at all but in terms of like plot yeah very much so the trip to scotland doesn't i mean when you say it's lifeless i do understand but i couldn't tell if there was like a deliberate ironic detachment to the film or if that's just like you say like the moments of improvisation or because it did feel like kind of stilted Mm. Oh, I, oh, think uh, it's like, a bit, I definitely think it's a bit pretentious. But oh, I, but extremely. Like, but, but, I, but anyway, I mean, like the kind of character of the the writer character is quite. I mean, Bruce Willis' character is quite is kind of sort of comic comically, sort of like, you, you know, it, it, it was, it was stupid in that respect. But yeah, similar. Can, yeah. Oh, sorry. If, um, no. Come on. Um, it kind of reminded me of when you watch. Um, I know, say for, like a. Made in Chelsea, for example, I could not tell. Oh God! Lo- like, no, not that it was similar. I need to, in any I need way. to go back to this and see. <laughs> it has been a lot. It has been a while. Uh, I couldn't. I couldn't tell like the what was staged and what was kind of or what was like deliberately. So, like, especially with the writer, was it the kind of like, mm. kind of like mocking like his kind of like, I know like, bourgeois but countercultural like ideas of a writer, and then him looking at, like this like middle class girlfriend, or or is it, but it, or is that the I don't know. I couldn't. I couldn't really gauge what it was like, where it was yeah. going. I guess that's the quality I kind of enjoy about it. And I like. I like its whimsical kind of like qualities. I mean, yeah, mm. they're. All, I don't necessarily buy into it. Mm. I don't take it too seriously, the kind of thing. But yeah, I, yeah. yeah cause I, similarly, yeah, I just couldn't tell how seriously we were meant to take it. So yeah. Like the woes of the the protagonist, like the writer and his girlfriend. They're both so. Well, they're. Sort of shallow. I think, yeah, they're very shallow, and you know he's always whining about his about her parents, and <laughs> you know. I mean, but I, I still, I, that's still interesting in itself. It's just there was no like cl- clear avenue of like exploring that in like a in an intelligent way or like a clear mm, way. Yeah, it just it did feel a bit cluttered. Or like it, how it d- detached it was. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not sure. I think it's like reflection. I quite liked his friend a bit. Like in ah. some ways, like the, 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 uh, I, I kind of like that um, foppish nineteen early seventies <sighs> Canterbury prog rock kind of like sort of. He had the hairstyle. Yeah, and, like. the, and the weird and the, the the jangly kind of folk, kind of avant folk, kind of like mm. overtone at the beginning. Like, um, and I guess I I I I I think for I think it feels like a bit of an anomaly. I mean, I don't know. I mean, as 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 a re- as a resident budding expert on post-war British cinema, how do you feel it fits in or doesn't in or doesn't into the canon? Oh, thanks. That's an honour. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, in terms of social realism, I can see how it's kind of got the aesthetic of social realism in some ways. Well, it's natural. Well, British, British ones are very naturalist, aren't they? Or sometimes. Can be mm. other times it's a bit like it's like naturalized settings and kind yeah. of like for you know representation. Possibly, of reality. I yeah. mean, I have been I've been looking at for my dissertation. I've been looking at mostly late fifties, early sixties mm. stuff. So this feels yeah. so early seventies stuff does feel like kind of a different world, really. But um, yeah, I suppose there's a legacy of that kind of. I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I suppose. Sorry, that's not that's no, not very really helpful. <laughs> I mean, you could say like, like, do you think it has? It shares the same reason. It, it's the same reason why you didn't like um, um, shadows. Yeah, shadows. Yes, yeah, that, it, I, I, I was thinking. It that. reminded me of. I that. don't know how much of that is a personal inadequacy of mine that I can't deal with. An English seminar. Loose improvised stuff. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> so yeah, for context, shadows is by John Cassavetes, Cassavetes, um, and it's a uh, 1959, mostly. Um, well, it's, it's mostly through improvisation and it sort of um, follows in a very unstructured way a few characters mm. as they kind of over like, a few days as they sort of trope around New York yeah. being being cool and what yeah and, and that is what not doing much but and that's what kind of irritated me about it it didn't bother me that nothing much happens it was more the fact that it was so self-consciously yeah. um, cool and I think in a similar way um, Private Road did feel like it was doing that a little bit. Oh, it yeah, was very yeah. <coughs> self-consciously <coughs> young artistic bohemians um, just wanting freedom uh, in a very... 
I think it maybe it comes, down to, comes down to personal taste because I think it, I think <laughs> yeah I, that I, might just be me. I think no because like you, I would never show that to Joe. He'd, 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 uh. he'd uh, you know, I, I have a poison, <laughs> a poisonous, poisonous friend who could make who couldn't make it today. Who would who would um dissolve this in his in his, in, in in his venomous jaws like like with 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 with, with caustic saliva, and so it would cease to exist in my mind anymore. So I want to keep it innocent in my head. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm. So we've got. So I think now we've got like a recommend. Um, it's probably Molly's turn to recommend yeah. something this week. So in a similar way, um, I am also suggest uh, recommending something that I haven't seen in a while, but made a big impression on me when I did watch it. Uh, so I'm recommending Claude Chabrol's uh, The Butcher or Le Boucher, but I don't know why it often isn't Further translated that. into English. It's brilliant. Um, I think it's from 1970, uh, if I remember correctly. And yes, quite a Hitchcockian thriller following um, the strange relationship between a school teacher and a butcher in a French village. Sounds good. Should be a treat. Excellent. <laughs> Excellent. And um, with that, um, we so with that we should probably come to the end of the podcast. Um, goodbye. Thanks. We're existing goodbye. outside of time.